Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be thinking about the kinematics of a roll of tape being transferred from one rotating spool to another, um, as shown in the diagram that you can see here, and this is the sort of thing that you might find inside an old-fashioned cassette. So the goal of the video is going to be to derive some differential equations uh, that describe how the radii of the two spools, R1 and R2, as defined on the diagram, uh, evolve over time. So other than R1 and R2, the only parameters that are going to appear in our final differential equations are uh, the thickness of the tape, tau, and the velocity of the tape v, which I've also marked um, onto the diagram. Because I've drawn that velocity arrow pointing to the right up at the top there, um, you can see that the tape is exiting the spool on the left uh, and going on to the spool on the right, and therefore R1 is going to be decreasing over time, while R2 will be increasing over time. We're going to assume that the tape thickness tau is constant, which is a pretty realistic assumption. Um, however, we're not going to assume anything about the velocity v, so v may be a constant uh, throughout the entire process of rolling the tape from the left spool onto the right spool, or it might vary. When it comes to solving the differential equations that we're going to derive, the solutions are going to take very different forms depending on what we assume about v, right? Whether whether it's a constant or whether we allow it to vary with time and therefore I'm going to postpone that discussion for the next video where we'll actually solve the equations. So the first piece of physics that's going to go into our model is the conservation of volume. So essentially uh, assuming that the total volume of the tape um, cannot be changed which I suppose is equivalent to assuming that the tape can't be stretched. Uh, it's quite a reasonable assumption. And I've expressed that mathematically uh, in this form here, V1 plus V2 plus what I've called Vx is a constant. So V1 and V2 are the volumes of tape, which are at any particular instant in time, um, sitting on spool one on the left and sitting on spool two on the right, respectively. This Vx is what I'm calling the external volume of tape, which is essentially the volume of uh, this part of the tape here, this part of the tape here, and this part of the tape here uh, combined. So that's the tape that is not on any particular spool at uh, a particular instant in time. Now for most realistic setups, uh, the external volume of tape is going to be much smaller than the volume uh, on the two spools combined. Um, for example, typically for a cassette tape, uh, the total volume of tape or the total length of tape uh, is a couple of hundred meters. Well, the amount of tape that's uh, off the spools at any moment in time, I suppose, is about 10 centimeters. So uh, really, really tiny. And mathematically, I've expressed that as Vx external volume is much less than V1 plus V2. So combining that inequality with our original equation uh, allows us to say that V1 plus v2 um, is approximately constant, right, to a very good approximation. And we can eliminate the constant by differentiating both sides to get v1 dot time derivative of v1 plus time derivative of v2 uh, is approximately zero. So this essentially amounts to saying that any volume of tape which exits the spool on the left sort of immediately ends up being added to the spool on the right. Um, that might seem obvious, but in reality, that won't be quite true. If you imagine uh, how this diagram would change as R1 decreases and R2 increases, you can see that uh, this point here and this point here, in other words, um, the point of tangency uh, of the tape onto each of the spools, those two points are going to move around as the two radii change. And therefore, this length of tape and this length of tape will be varying a little bit um, as the tape is played, right? The bit of tape at the top is not going to change in length, um, but those sort of two vertical-ish segments of tape uh, will change slightly in length. However, again, that effect is gonna be negligible because of this um, assumption that we're making here. So next, I need to introduce a couple more parameters, which I didn't introduce at the beginning because they're gonna cancel out and not appear in our final result. Um, but uh, we're going to need them as part of our working. So first of all, notice that I've just marked these two little r values uh, onto the diagram. The lowercase r is sort of the internal radius of each spool. Those are assumed to be the same. And I've also said that the width of the tape is w. Uh, there's a constant width throughout the entire length of the tape. So we can then come up with some expressions for the volumes v1 and v2. The volume v1, the volume of tape on the left-hand spool, uh, is the volume of a sort of annulus shaped prism, the cross section of that annulus um, is just one circle minus another. Um, and so it's pi times r1 squared minus small r squared. 
uh, and then we just have to multiply that by the sort of depth of the prism, which is the same as the width of the tape here. So that's W. And by the very same reasoning, the volume V2 is just going to be pi r2 squared minus small r squared times w. So next, in order to understand a little bit more about the volume rate of change, uh, I want to imagine zooming in to a small element of the tape, let's say at the top here, uh, you're going to get sort of a little cuboid shape that looks something like uh, that. The, the height of that cuboid is the thickness of the tape, which is tau. Uh, the width is just w. Um, and this element is constantly moving to the right. Now, if we want to consider the tape which passes a given point in a certain time interval, let's call the time interval dt, an infinitesimally short time interval, uh, just using speed as distance over time, um, the horizontal extent of that cuboid is going to be speed times time v dt and therefore the amount of volume let's call it d capital v um, is just going to be uh, the three sides of the cuboid multiplied together we're going to get v times tau times w times uh, dt we can then turn that into essentially a differential equation by dividing both sides by dt so get dv by dt that's a big v for volume uh, is equal to small v velocity multiplied by tau multiplied by w. Uh, I'm also going to put modulus signs around this derivative. The reason for that is that uh, the volume rate of change um, on the left spool is going to be negative because the left spool is losing volume over time, while the uh, volume rate of change on the right spool is positive because you're adding the tape material onto the right spool. Now this expression here gives us sort of the local volume flow rate, I suppose, um, at any particular point on the tape where the speed is v. Um, we talked earlier about how we're assuming that any tape that leaves the left spool essentially immediately ends up um, on the right spool, and that's equivalent to assuming that the velocity of the tape is the same everywhere so that the external bit of tape um, doesn't change its length. That means that we can set v1 dot to just minus this, and we can set v2 dot equal to positive that same quantity. Um, so let's construct some equations using that idea. So v1 dot, uh, the left hand side of our equation um, is going to come from just differentiating our v1 expression with respect to time. So we're going to get d by dt of, uh, let me just copy and paste this whole expression, pi r1 squared minus small r squared times w. Uh, and we said we're going to set that equal to minus uh, v tau w. Um, then some nice simplifications are going to happen. So as promised earlier, the w's will cancel because you've got a w uh, on both sides. I am also going to divide both sides by pi. Uh, when you do the differentiation, this small r squared term is going to disappear because that's a constant. So the left hand side is going to end up as d r1 squared by dt. So the rate of change of not r1, but r1 squared. Uh, the right hand side is going to end up as minus v tau over pi. By exactly the same logic, you're going to end up with a differential equation for r2 that says dr2 squared by dt is equal to positive v tau uh, over pi. And that is the pair of differential equations that we set out to derive. Now, in terms of actually solving them, remember, as we discussed at the beginning, uh, we haven't said anything about v. So v might be a constant, it might not be a constant. And if we want to solve the differential equations, we need to specify um, how v behaves. So in the next video, we're going to consider two different cases um, and solve these differential equations and, and try to uh, understand what's going on with these. So thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video soon.